Well, hello, my dears. It is time for class. I haven't done one of these videos in a while, so I want to take a moment to look at the trends. Now, I know I am probably coming in a little late to the game here, but I have purposely been spending a lot of time studying what everyone else is saying and just formulating my own ideas about what's going on with the trends. As we go through today, I will share with you what I think you can hack and what I think you should not be doing. Most of it is pretty good though. Okay, so let's take a look at floors. Lots of checkers, and it's not just floors that I'm seeing checkered, but I've seen blankets like this and different decorations. What I would say about the checkered floor idea is that I think if you turn it more like a diamond shape like these, it's going to have a longevity as opposed to that checkerboard like 1950s diner look. So I would turn them at an angle and you can do anything from, you know, marble and slate like this laundry room or you could just paint wood floors and that's fine too. And there's lots of great tutorials on this. I've also seen people take the one by one foot tile in their kitchen and paint that. That looks, looks good. Okay, colors. You've already caught on, I'm sure, but we are embracing color again, coming out of the white on white on white look from the last decade. And I think it has a lot to do with COVID. I think people being home more and seeing their homes and wanting to be comfy, like the comfy cozy awareness is up. And paint companies are actually releasing their historic home colors. I don't know if you knew that, but they have sets of colors that are specifically for old homes and they're true to that time period. And, and so they're just releasing those colors to everyone now. And we get a lot of muted colors. So blues, greens, yellows even, and they're coming up in sofas as well. The velvet sofa is all the rage right now. They have beautiful colors, the muted tones that we love so much. And I want you to notice too in these painted rooms how much, like where the paint's going. You're not seeing the white trim anymore. There is a different sheen on the walls and the trim, but they're all the same colors. So the doors, the trim, the ceilings are uh, maybe a semi-gloss, and then the walls are an eggshell. That's very beautiful and sophisticated looking. Oh, and then earthy tones. So chocolate brown is back, and I can't say I'm sad about that. I used to love chocolate brown, and then I had to take a breather from it because it felt old, um, but I love to wear brown. I love to be around brown. I think the um, nature color, so it makes us think of the earth and you know, nobody ever walks through the woods and goes, oh gosh, this place is getting so dated. Be cautious with chocolate brown. I think that it can be overdone just like black can be overdone. So just use it like an accent. Just put pieces of it. Make sure you have some light colors, at least creams in there to help balance it. But it is very moody and beautiful and elegant. People are doing their entire kitchen cabinets in chocolate brown, which is funny because I think it looks like chocolate bars on the doors. And then the mauves and plums, the peaches, so beautiful. Terracotta, especially seeing terracotta floors, the tile. And then lime wash is coming back. It's not the faux painting that we were doing 20 years ago. It's a lot softer than that, but it does have that, that old world texture look going on that's very beautiful. And continuing on with wall options, we have the gorgeous wallpaper and they've really worked on the removability so don't be as scared as you once were maybe with wallpaper it's getting easier to remove lots of country patterns with the wallpaper and then murals beautiful murals that go all around the room this little girl's bed here is called a jenny lind so if you see one of these when you're thrifting grab the jenny lind beds very beautiful i love them painted and I love them left as wood. So even if you don't wanna do wallpaper all throughout your house, it could be a beautiful addition to your hallway, your bathroom or a closet. You could put them in the laundry room and then I'm seeing them on ceilings as well. Sort of a fifth wall, accent wall. 
William Morris, if you're familiar with him, one of my all-time favorite designers, his patterns are back and I'm so glad to see them celebrated again. All these beautiful florals. All his work just feels so warm and nostalgic to me. I just love it. Furniture. I'm seeing lots of secretaries actually. So I love how they're not very deep and they can fit in a little corner of the room with a little accent chair and they can just create a cozy little space. A lot of them come with shelves that you can style beautifully. I particularly love secretaries that are one color on the outside and then you open them up and there's a whole nother color in there. I love that little surprise of that contrast. And then for sofas, this is called the bench cushion. So a lot of couches and sofas have the three or the two cushions, but the one cushion is called the bench cushion and that's very, very vintage looking. And then antiques are all the rage. So there's three reasons I think for this. One, people are, are more and more interested in sustainability and reusing their things. Two, we still have a lot of supply chain issues. So if you need to get a bed or a dresser now and you don't wanna wait for eight months, then go to the antique store and get something beautiful. And then I think along with this desire for more warmth and comfort in our homes, we also are valuing the story and the history of things and so we're more we're more apt to be drawn to an antique piece than maybe we were five years ago lighting all right shades have become really fun i feel like we've we're upping our game with shades so there's the fluted shades this glass is very beautiful we have pleated shades and there's lots of great tutorials. This is one that you could hack. I actually wanna make one of these just for kicks. So you can do them in silk. I think they're beautiful in silk just for a really monochromatic, elegant look or you can do them in prints. The block print looks fabulous. Gold shades, I love them. I think they're so elegant. This one's from Target and then these ones are a sort of a brushed metal. I think those are stunning. And this apothecary lamp is from Target as well. And then black shades, which I've loved for a while now, but lots of black shades. This is a French lamp and then gold inside. But this is a DIY that the gal took gold wrapping paper and cut it in strips, but then she decoupaged that in there. And it just gives this really warm glow. And then the black keeps it, keeps the light really contained. So it has this like down light going on that's all goldy and yummy. That's why people like those shades. And they're just super elegant. And then a lot of woven shades. So natural materials, very sweet, the basket look. These scalloped ones I adore, so sweet. Caning, I, this is one I predicted a couple years ago. The caning is still going strong and you, you can do the little ones. This is a big one. This so such a cool divider in the bathroom there. If you are actually, I saw Lone Fox do this. There was a sort of 70s bathroom and overhead was the like, I think it was fluorescent lights and it had the like wood frame and it was kind of, you know, hanging down with the plates of plastic. And so he just took the plastic out and put caning in there. And you can buy caning on Etsy. It instantly looked so much better. Oh, here's the large caning again on the bed. All right, kitchens. And kitchens don't lie. Your kitchens generally will tell you the decade that the house was built in or the last remodel was done. They are super trendy and super expensive to change. So it's something frustrating about kitchens, but marble backsplashes. But not just a backsplash, it's called a slab splash now. And the entire wall is a huge slab of marble. It's stunning. This is a waterfall called a waterfall island where they have a slab on the side and they match up the veining so it actually looks like the, the veining in the marble is going across the top and then goes down the side all the way to the floor. So huge pieces of marble, trending, extreme veining, Countertops that are three plus inches thick of marble. Marble sinks. So you just see this really high contrast and extreme veining. This is actually the only one that I would not do. As beautiful as I think it is, it is going to date faster than you are going to need to replace your things. 
I actually, oh gosh, people are going to hate me for this. I would rather fake this completely. If I had marble counters, I would do contact paper on a board and stick it on the wall. Or you can do an epoxy with this um, resin and make it, actually, I want to do that soon on Instagram. Stay tuned for that reel. And do a fake marble backsplash if, if you're like crazy about this look. If you've already done this in a new build and you love it, enjoy it. <laughs> Don't listen to me, just skip ahead. But the odds of you liking it in 10 years is not good. And to have to take out beautiful marble like that, oh, it's gonna be painful. Oh, and then we have the shelf. So open shelving still there. But we have the one long shelf going across the kitchen. You could do this with contact paper as well. Now we've moved beyond the simple little bar cart and we have really beautiful bar areas. I mean, this whole, this is a, a little porch area that wasn't really being used for anything. And Drew at Lone Fox turned it into a little speakeasy and there's a little fireplace and a little record player and a little bar area. Then people are also displaying their wine really beautifully. And I love this picture because it just made me think of an 80s house where they have all those alcoves and things that people don't know what to do with. They hang art in it and it just doesn't feel right to them. I feel like you could put glass shelves in there, wire it with some lighting and put beautiful wooden French doors on it and do a wine display. Oh, that would look really good. Another thing that I'm seeing a lot of is people are installing butler pantries or sculleries. I've heard them called both of those. and they are treating them kind of like powder rooms. I mean, they're really going all out with their paint colors. They're not just a walk-in pantry. I mean, they're their own tiny little jewel box of a room. So they'll have countertops, they'll have appliances in there, their own decorations and lighting. They'll add ladders and artwork, full prep areas. So you can go bold with this idea and I love it. I think it's so European and elegant. Throughout the house as a whole, I'm hearing that they're not doing as many open floor plants. And I don't know if I'm, sh I'm, I'm not sure that that is really true, but I do see it in a little bit of the compartmentalizing, like doing the butler pantries and people are wanting rooms for their hobbies. So of course, libraries are gorgeous and you could do even just a, you know, closet area, or you could kind of create your own room with two bookshelves coming off of a space and around a window and then add crown molding. Of course, home offices have become a big deal. And I do think that definitely is different. People need to have a room closed off for the home offices. Then there's these listening, they're called listening rooms. And I guess where people just sit and listen to music, depending on if that's your hobby or not, if you're into, you know, maybe you're a musician or something. I don't see that sticking around very long, but it is a thing right now that there's listening rooms, craft rooms. So this is my craft craft room. It's actually just a walk-in closet, but it is completely dedicated to all the artistic things that I want to do. And I keep my fabric in there, my wrapping paper and, you know, glue guns and things. So I do get the whole little room dedicated to your hobby. So supposedly we're not going to have our living rooms be centered around the TV anymore. I don't know if I believe that one, but I do see more of the frame TVs. We have a frame TV and it looks like a big piece of artwork in our living room. People come in and they don't even know that it is a TV. It's always an aha moment for them. So I see that where people are disguising TV a lot better. You can situate your furniture in a way where it's more encouraging conversation and then your TV is kind of off in the corner, like maybe like off to the side of the mantle. I do like that. And then when you want to watch TV, it's on a swivel arm, you know, that's like mount, that's mounted on the wall and you pull it out and you turn it towards everyone. And that I think is a really good solution. But I don't see people completely getting rid of the TV in the living room yet. And last of all, I see a lot of details coming in. So we have the bullion fringe that you can add and you can just have an upholsterer or you could do it yourself. It's literally, you hot glue it onto the couch. That's how you add trim when you're doing upholstery. So details like that, I, 
actually really love the directions we're going with design. It's definitely more of a maximal look instead of a minimalist look. And just super cozy and colorful, very English cottage looking, so you know I love that. And beautiful details like scallops on everything. I mean, give me all the scallops. Tassels on drapery is really beautiful. This is a DIY that I did with Ikea drapes. You can add tassels to linen drapes easily. The reeded cabinets are still showing up. I do love them. I would love to do this on a piece of furniture, just on the doors. If the doors were the right style, you could just take dowels or you could take, oh, this is a DIY from Jenna Sue. They took pieces of molding that have the fluted look on them and they just cut it to the right size and glued those in their cabinet doors. And last but not least, we are no longer doing the pillow chop. Do you know what I mean? We have the feather pillows and you fluff them up and then you chop them in the middle and it gives this little dent. And all the pillows were styled that way for about 10 years and now they're like not doing that anymore, I guess. So they're just having them fluffed and then just sort of laying on the side, you know, and less pillows, just maybe three for the whole couch and just giving it a lot more lived in look. So cozy and comfortable is in so next week I want to tackle a new style that is on the scene. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do, but there's Japandi, there is Coastal Grandma, there's Dark Academia, Art Deco, Hollywood Regency. So there's a bunch of names being thrown out there. I love that about the a new decade. So we'll be tackling one of those. I did a few last year and they were your guys' favorites. They did really well. So we'll do more of those. And I'm going to link that video where I did predictions in 2021. So I hope you guys learned a lot. Thank you so much for watching. I love to teach interior design. I am an interior designer, but even more so I am a teacher and I have an sort of, I call it my inner circle group where we do design work together and I teach just whoever wants to know about it. You don't have to have any big skill sets or anything, but um, that is called my behind the scenes group. I'm gonna give you a link for the wait list for that. And I'm also, working on a full comprehensive design course for you guys to take. It's called the Elite Decorating Academy and I'll also let you get on the wait list for that as well if you're interested. All right, let me know in the comments below which was your favorite trend. All right, you guys, I will see you next week. Take care.